Hi everybody and welcome to this bite-sized episode of Hospitality Huddles. Um, every week, or as much as I can, I want to try and get on and give you a quick short blast about one subject a week that you might be able to take back to your operation and implement to help you grow your business successfully. So today we're going to talk about strategy and I'm going to tell you the three-step process that we do with Odin Hospitality when we go into our new clients. So let's get started. So when we go in with new clients and we have to look at how their F&B performance is going and what's happening in their operation and what opportunities there might be coming out of it, we always go in there and we build a strategy along three simple stages. Now those three simple stages are easy to do in your own operation and they're easy to implement, but a lot of the time we just don't make time to do them. So I'm going to take you through each process and I'm going to give you some questions to ask. I'm going to give you a little quote for each from someone very famous that might help give you that penny drop moment. So the first thing we do when we walk into our clients, really simple, we listen to what people are telling us. So what are your team telling you? What are they telling you about the roadblocks? What are they telling you about the operation that might be a challenge to them? What's hurting their workflow? What are the things that they think is really well? What do they think isn't working really well? And as a secret tip, I always ask the team, what is it that each outlet is? And I want them to tell me back in one simple line. It's amazing how many times I go into operations and find that people say the different things. Um, you know, the, the conversations that they have, the message that they give about the restaurants, everything's different. And that's one of the areas where then we know we can go and focus first is the story. Because if you don't have clarity in your business and you don't have clarity around your outlets, how can you expect your guests to have the same thing? So it's really important to listen to your team and listen to what they're telling you. And it's not a session where you're asking them to tell you everything that's wrong with their job or what the staff food isn't great or stuff. This is real tangible stuff about the operation that can help you make improvements. I worked for a business in Dubai and one of the things that we used to do there was we used to have a, a system where every week we did a task called Quality Circle. Uh, we used to sit with every member of the team and we used to go around in an open forum and it was all open, it was respectful, no one couldn't say something and they used to tell us one positive and one improvement about the business and we'd write it down. And then through the week that gave each store GM the action plan of what to work on that week. Sometimes we weren't able to do it, so we went back the next week and we communicated why we couldn't do it, a number of different reasons. Maybe that was investment. Maybe it just wasn't possible what they were asking. Maybe it just wasn't right for everyone. But we always communicated back to them. And then we celebrated the things that we changed. Like We learned so many things about the operation by doing that that it always taught me about the beauty and the importance of listening to the people who talk to your guests the most in the business, and that's the team. So that's the first question. The second one is what are the guests telling you? What's the feedback that the guests are coming back with? What's on Google reviews? What's on TripAdvisor? What's on your sentiment platforms that make a real difference to the guests? That might be about quality. It might be about availability. It might be about service. Take all of these items and simply put, if you don't have a sentiment platform, Put them on an Excel document and every time it's mentioned, put it in the same column and look at the things that are starting to become trends. Simple example. If you're running a restaurant and someone says that the chips are always cold or it takes ages to get coffee for breakfast, when more than like three or four people are saying it, that becomes a real trend that you can focus on so that the next time you have all your team together, you can start by asking the question, what do we do to get coffee to people quicker for breakfast and what's stopping us doing it and you're going to get told all the answers and you're going to be able to create an action plan around it so what are the guests telling you it's an important question and then what are the stakeholders telling you the owners the executives the leadership teams what are these guys telling you what frustrates them what do they like what do they not like now these are the people that i listened to the last because sometimes they're not close enough to the operation to understand. 
but sometimes managing up is just as important as managing down. So understanding their expectations and what their likes and dislikes are are just as important as others. We did a recent cafe concept and we were looking at what the overall theme should be for the restaurant. And um, it was really interesting that by talking to the owner, we found out that his mother, who the restaurant was named after, was actually Australian. And the concept lended itself to being an Australian cafe. So it was a real nice fit that we wouldn't have found out otherwise had we not spoke to the owner. So it's really important to listen to everyone in the business. So the first stage we do on every strategy is listen. So what's the quote that I can give you that's going to be the penny drop moment on this one? Well, it's one by Ernest Hemingway. And he said, when people talk, listen completely. Because most people never listen. And it's really true. I talked about a lot about how I went on a mental health first aid course by the Burnt Chef Project. And one of the skills that I came away with from that was that I don't listen properly. And ever since then, I've really focused hard that when people are talking to me, I listen. So I put my phone down. I'm not looking at notifications. I have notifications turned off on my laptop. And I really focus on what people are saying. So it's really important that when you ask the questions, you listen, you write things down, and you make sure you go back to them. The second one is observe. Now, this is really important. How many times do you sit in your outlets and really look at what's happening in your business? Because it's not easy. I know that I've been there, I've been an operator. It's really hard to sit down and watch what's going on. But every great leader is on the floor. So it's really important to observe. And that's something that we do when we do every strategy is we sit down and we watch what's happening in real life in every single outlet in the hotel. We sit in the restaurants, we sit breakfast, lunch and dinner. We sit in the bar, we sit pre-dinner, we see afternoons, we see what afternoon tea looks like. We sit in the lounges, we sit in the pool areas, we sit in the operation and we look and we watch and we try and look at what the roadblocks are. And we look at how they do this alongside the feedback that we've got from people when we've done the listen process. And we look at if we can marry up any of those to show what the aspects were from when we listened to the ones where we observed. And it's really obvious a lot of the times that some of these roadblocks that are there, we can fix very easily by just thinking a little bit differently and looking at how we fix those problems instead of doing what we've always done. So what are the roadblocks? That's the first thing we look at when we observe. The second thing, and it's the thing that probably people ignore the most, is what is going well. If things are going well in your business, keep doing them well. Make sure that whatever you do to stop the roadblocks doesn't influence what's going well. But more importantly, does it create an opportunity where you can double down on the things that are going well, which means you can eliminate some of the roadblocks because you simply don't need to try to deliver them anymore. I see this a lot and I always say to people, sometimes simplifying things and focusing on one thing is better than focusing on two or three things. Do the one thing really well. And if you have the opportunity and you have the momentum, it's really simple to just execute and do something else once you've got success. It's really hard to try and make three things be successful at once. The last thing that we look at when we do observe and we, observe, uh, we go on observation is we look at what the inconsistencies are. Consistency is key in hospitality, as everyone knows. The minute you let a customer down or a guest down, they're never going to come back again. So what are the inconsistencies and how can we help to eliminate what they are? Sometimes it might mean changing a process. It might mean simplifying the way we do things. It might be that the workflow is wrong. It might be simply staff training. But we have to eliminate inconsistencies. So we always look at what they are. And we marry them up with the roadblocks. We marry them up with what's going well. And we try and find the solutions to overcome them. The quote I want to use for this one that kind of sums up everything on observation is one by Robert, ba Robert Baden Powell. If you make listening and observation your occupation, you will gain much more than you can by talking. So it's really important. We listen to people and we observe what's happening. And it's much better than going in and trying to talk your way through things. Let other people give you the answers. Don't assume what those answers are yourself. And then finally, on our three-step plan, 
when we've listened to the stakeholders, we've listened to the team, we've listened to the guests, and we've observed every single outlet at every single time of day, we try and get as much data as possible from the business, and we sit there and we analyze, and we obsess over details. When we're looking at data, we're looking at opportunities. We're looking at where peaks are, and we're looking at where the lows are. And we look at how we can eliminate the lows and grow the, the peaks, because that's super important. The ones that are the middle ground are ticking along. They aren't the ones to focus on straight away. The ones to focus on straight away, the ones that aren't working, and the ones that are working, because that's where you're going to have the most success. Once you've nailed those, then you can go to the bit in the middle that's kind of trending along on a flat line, and you, look at, you can look at how you can influence those after. So when we look at the data, what is the data telling us? What are the opportunities to improve what we're doing? And then does the data verify what we've found during the listen and observe findings? Because sometimes people will tell you their gut feeling and will tell you what they think. It doesn't always mean that that's the same thing in data. So how many times has a chef said to you, that dish, it always really sells quite a bit. And actually, when you've gone to go and look at the sales mix, it's one of the worst sellers on the menu. And it's maybe just because the night before they sold quite a few dishes that's had a big impact on how they think that dish performs. So always verify what you're being told and what you're seeing with data. It's super important. And then finally, what data is missing? What data could the business use to improve performance that they're not utilizing when you did your visit? And look at how you can put that data into the business. That might be a simple Excel spreadsheet. It might be a simple process. It might be going for a tech system and doing a bit of diligence around it. But if you're missing data, you're missing an opportunity to analyze your business effectively. So it's super important to look at that. If you're missing cost of sales data, you have to find a way to get your inventories on there and tracked so that you can start managing that cost line properly. If you're not seeing cover count and you're not seeing average check and you're not seeing sales data into your reservation system, you have to look at how you can make that happen because building the profiles is going to make it super clear and it's going to give you so much more information about your guests that means you can personalize experience. The quote I want to sum up on this one is one by Toto Wolf, who is one of the Formula One uh, principles. You need the right balance between data and gut feeling. Now, this might turn around and make it look as though what I've just said about data is just complete fiction, but it's not. Data can tell you so much, but data is only good if data is clean. So sometimes you have to back up everything that you've learned during this strategy process of listen, observe, and analyze. And you have to put your gut feeling into the equation and come out with a conclusion that is well thought through, backed up with data, backed up with stakeholder input and then you have to deliver what that means so sometimes gut feeling has a massive influence if you're looking at which ones are more urgent than others a lot of the time gut feeling can be the thing that can push you towards what you want to do so it's a huge impact on the strategy so there you have it that's our three-step plan that we follow for building a strategy for any f &B operation and when people hire us at Auden Hospitality to go in and look at how we can help them create opportunity in their F&B outlets. This is the process that we do before we present any findings or any strategy or any concepts to the owners or to the hoteliers, because it's super important to always make sure that you do the diligence and that you really truly understand what needs to change. Otherwise, you might be just changing the things that aren't going to have the biggest impact and therefore you're just going to keep going at the same pace you are. I really hope you like this bite side episode. It's a little bit different and let's see how it performs to see how many of these uh, we'll do in future. But if you liked it, drop a review, drop a subscribe. Uh, and if it goes down well, I'll keep coming back with different topics every week. In the meantime, if you want to learn more, check out some of the great episodes we've had on Hospitality Huddles. Or why don't you subscribe to our F&B Insider newsletter that gives F&B leaders one actionable tip every single week to grow their performance and think differently about f &B. There's a link in the show notes, so go there, click on the link, subscribe, and it's released at 3pm GMT every single Saturday. 
Thanks for listening and see you next time for a great guest on Hospitality Huddles.